It's a new discovery. How far down? How many meters? 10 or 20 meters. Danger? The first time we go, it's danger. Jeff, when we are on the, on the cave, yes. uh, we go in this. Okay. Okay? Okay. Be careful, it's dangerous. Okay, thank you. I'll be careful. You find a hole in the ground and you crawl down into that hole and you're in a different world. We? Oui? Yeah, I'm okay, Francois. I'm safe. I'm just amazed at what's down here. The wall of barbed wire. It's a live rifle grenade. It's a pregnant woman. There's a name, Louis Lefebvre. L-E-F-E-V-R-E. -E -E. Another name by Louis Lefebvre under this heart. These messages left on these walls are notes to the future. These modern people from 100 years ago are talking to us. They're telling us that we are vulnerable just like they were. And World War I gives us a way to look at ourselves without being right or left, with no politics involved, to see our own vulnerabilities, to see how quickly when we lose conscience and human decency as the governing force in our life, how quickly we can end up in a nightmare and lose everything we hold dear. I'm often asked about how I found the hidden world of World War I. It was, like so many things in life, a coincidence. I was on a six-week trip that was arranged with the help of the French Defense Ministry. The result was that I met local people and became friends with them. We bonded around the preservation of this, what they call patrimony, this history. Even though we don't speak the same language, photography is a language, art is a language. The problem was that I had no background in photographing in complete darkness, so I went back to work in the ER in the United States, and in between patients, I was reading about how to photograph in darkness. <laughs> There's no book on how to photograph underground. So uh, I, I had to innovate and uh, I ordered basically two of everything. And the first time that I came to the place that we are now, which was the first stop on my return trip, we had something like 700 pounds of gear that we lowered down on a rope almost 30 feet underground. It took about an hour just to transport it by wheelbarrow deep into the site. And that's how the process began. On the walls of these underground cities, you find representations of the inner life of these soldiers in a moment in time when they were facing the first modern mass destruction, where they could be gone the next day or the next hour. There really was no other place to go where you could have some sense of security that when a bomb hit above, you wouldn't be blown to smithereens. When the war ended, these guys were anxious to go home, and they just left everything in place. All around you, you see objects of daily life. You find tobacco pouches and clocks and pots and pans. And you may pick up an object that a human hand touched a hundred years ago that's been lying in the same place ever since. It's surreal. Looking at World War I, not as history, but as today, as a way of understanding ourselves and our lives, as a way of connecting to what's important about our humanness. World War I was a pivot point where technology and progress overtook our lives. We can never go back. We can never become non-modern. Modernity is with us. Modern life is, is something that gives us great advantages. But World War I helps us to find a place inside where we can hold on to our humanness. And that's why it's important.